In this video, I'm going to give you my top five tips for data analytics portfolio projects. If you're a professional and you're interested in changing careers, you want to move out of whatever job you're doing into a formal analytics role, like a data analyst or a data scientist, then you know that a portfolio project or a collection of projects in your portfolio gets you around this catch-22 situation of, hey, I want to get an analytics job, but I don't have any analytics experience. But if I don't have an analytics job, how do I get the experience? A well-executed portfolio project strategy can help you with the hiring manager. The analytics hiring manager can say, oh, hey, Dave doesn't necessarily have any formal experience in this space, but he's got all these projects that he's done. And they demonstrate to me as the hiring manager that Dave can do the work and I'm willing to take a bet on him. So not surprisingly, if you're going to invest the time in creating portfolio projects in the data analytics space, you want to make sure that they're of high quality, right? Because the idea is to impress a hiring manager. So this video, once again, is about my top five tips on how to do that. Now, I'm going to say something that's probably going to be a bit controversial to some people. Generally speaking, the topic of your portfolio project doesn't matter as much as the things that I'm going to talk about in this video. Now, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna head off the haters here, right? I don't want any comments flaming me for what I just said. So I'm gonna be crystal clear, right? I said generally speaking. So for example, if your career goal is to work on self-driving cars, you have a very specific career goal in that space, then obviously the topic is going to matter. You're going to need to have at least one project in your portfolio that deals with computer vision because that is germane. It is specifically required to build self-driving cars. However, a lot of professionals are interested in getting into analytics and they're looking at positions like data analyst roles or data scientist roles, and it's not so clear cut what sort of project you should be doing. So the subject of this video is not topic selection for your portfolio projects. That should be totally done through a market research exercise. And if you're interested in learning more about what I mean by that, go ahead and click up here, not right the second, and you'll find two videos where I talk about how to do market research for analytics jobs. The videos in question look at jobs at Amazon and Facebook, and what you do is you cross-reference the kinds of things that they mention, and that helps you guide you to pick the types of topics that are gonna be maximally useful for you. But once again, that's not the subject of this video. The subject of this video is, once you've picked a topic through market research, how do you make it awesome? How do you impress that hiring manager? So first up, tip number one is passion. Whatever topic you pick, Please, 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 please pick a topic that you're passionate about. And the reason for this is simple. Most likely, if you're trying to do a career-changing kind of thing, you probably have a day job. And if you're not passionate about the topic that you're working on, it's going to be really hard to keep motivated on nights and weekends to not only learn the material, but also to craft a project that is excellent, that's going to impress a hiring manager. Not only that, but if you ever get called in for an interview or maybe do a phone interview or something like that, you want to come across as passionate about it because hiring managers love passion. And, oh, and by the way, just so you know, I'm speaking from experience. I have been an analytics hiring manager at both Microsoft and Schedulicity. So I know what I'm talking about as far as that goes. I love, <laughs> I love to hire people with passion about what they do, okay? So you want to pick something with passion. That's tip number one. Tip number two, you need to show your work. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip over to GitHub and talk a little bit more what I mean about that. All right, here I am in GitHub, as you can see. And I know you're probably thinking to yourself, duh, Dave, I know that I need to put my portfolio projects on GitHub so that they are publicly accessible. So yes, absolutely. However, it's more than just this. So for example, I'm a big fan of using LinkedIn as a social media platform for professionals, right? It, it's a great place for you to develop a social network and a social presence. So showing your work is not just about having a GitHub project. That's a given, right? That's table stakes. That just gets your foot in the door. What I'm talking about also here is 
making sure that your projects are prominently displayed, for example, on your LinkedIn profile or on your CV slash resume. And more importantly, if you're not already on LinkedIn, get on LinkedIn, make sure your profile prominently features all of your, your data science projects, your data analytics projects, but also post about them on social media. Yeah, post about them on social media. Because here's the thing, it's one thing to apply for a job, a data analytics job, and then say, oh, I've got a project portfolio, please check it out. That's, that's It's totally doable and you should do it, absolutely. But what's even better yet is if you are constantly showing your work to the world. That gives you an opportunity to network in a new and powerful way. Because imagine, if you will, if a hiring manager sees a post about your project and they think it's interesting, or a member of the hiring manager's team sees your post on LinkedIn and likes it and then refers it to the hiring manager, why would you deny yourself that possibility? Because quite frankly, that scenario is far more powerful than just sending in an application to a company that's hiring. So show your work, not only with an awesome GitHub project, but also on social media. Show your work, show what you're doing. And you don't even have to wait until you're done, by the way. People love to see posts about work in progress. Say, hey, I've started a new data analytics portfolio project. Post about it on LinkedIn. Post your progress all along. And then, of course, obviously post about the final product. But don't wait necessarily until the final product. Posting about the process works. Not only that, but it'll probably help you gain followers and expand your network on LinkedIn, which means you get even more reach when you finally get done with the project. So show your work. That's tip number two. Tip number three, written communication skills. Okay, What do you see here? Okay, I'm not showing you code, right? The first thing I went to is I'm showing you the wiki for my particular capstone project. It's called Project Trommel. And remember, I made it a long time ago. It's like nine years ago now. So the technology is a little old. So just take that with a grain of salt. Don't focus too much on what the project was about. <laughs> focus on the qualities of the project. That's what I'm trying to get across in this video. But you notice there's lots of words here. And the, the idea here is simple, and I'm going to say this multiple times going forward in this video. Your portfolio projects are not just about demonstrating your technical skills. That's certainly part of it. But turns out that's actually not the most important part in practice, in my experience. What's more important is creating a portfolio project or a bunch of portfolio projects that shows you as a well-rounded professional, not just the technical, but everything else. And that's what I'll talk about later. The technical is not even necessarily the most differentiating thing, potentially. So written communication is certainly part of that. And you can see here that I wrote a lot of words because what I was trying to do was, was trying to communicate to whoever discovered Trommel, whether that was just through a random search on GitHub or because I was trying to get a job maybe at Microsoft, which is where I worked at the time, in the data science space. And I wanted a hiring manager to be impressed with what they saw. So I wrote words and tried to communicate as well as I could complex ideas and my motivations and my passion and what did I do, what I did in this project as eloquently as I could in the written word. I would suggest you go even farther than what you see here on this wiki. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I wrote a functional spec. I'm not saying that you have to write a functional spec. I'm just using this as an idea for you to understand how you could incorporate the written word, written communication skills into your project. So let me show you what I mean by that. So here I've got a Word doc that I created. It's my functional spec. And what happens in this doc is it tells you a lot about the why and how of my data analytics project here, which I called Project Trommel. So I've got a lot of words here. <laughs> and I keep saying that, like, just throw words into the document. No, 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 no. Um, I have a lot of prose. Let's, let's put it that way. I have a lot of prose. And I've got diagrams and all that sort of thing. But the idea is pretty simple, right? Not only did I write this for myself, because I was thinking, like, well, how do I scope my own project, which is always a good idea, by the way. But I also knew that I could use this as a communication tool to a hiring manager in terms of showing my well-roundedness as a professional. Not only could I write code, not only could I think of a cool idea, this idea that the hiring manager could see the where, the why 
of why uh, of the of the project itself and also my communication skills so written word written communication don't just focus on the tech just don't focus on the stats or the machine learning or the python code or the r code or whatever it might be also think okay this is an opportunity for me to communicate to a hiring manager that I am a well-rounded professional, that if they hire me, not only can I do the technical stuff, but I can communicate in the written word, which is still extremely important. So that's tip three. Okay, not surprisingly, tip four is verbal communication. So you'll notice that at the time that I created this back in the day, oops, excuse me, rose right here, I created a YouTube video. And in fact, my YouTube channel, which you're watching right now, was created specifically so that I could just create a video for this project, for my master's degree, and so that I can incorporate a video. Now, it's entirely possible that GitHub at this point supports video in a native format. To be honest with you, I don't know, <laughs> which I probably shouldn't admit, but at the time it didn't. So I, this is what I did. I created a YouTube channel and I put a video on it. And you can see here the video. And you can see here, look at that. Posted November 12th, 2012. So almost nine years ago now. <laughs> so a long time ago. And what you can see here is that it's a screencast. Oh, geez. Okay. Well, you can see here that back then I weighed a lot more than I do now. <laughs> so that's a story or a video for another day. But I'm just going to cruise around here real quick and just show you. Now, what was great about this is that it allowed me to communicate verbally. The video allowed me to communicate verbally. Unfortunately, I didn't include myself in this video, right? So I am not in this video at all. It's just simply a screencast. And that is unfortunate. If I could go back in time and do it over again, I would include me in the lower left corner, just like you're seeing, or excuse me, lower right corner, just like you're seeing in this video right now. Because that would allow a hiring manager to see, oh, okay, Dave can not only communicate verbally, but... He can see my body language, he can see my hand gestures, he can see my facial features. All that matters because obviously the delivery of communication in the verbal in the verbal space is just a lot more than just talking. So especially in this day and age right now where we're still under lockdown from, from COVID mostly because of, you know, because of the pandemic at the time of this recording, it's kind of important to be able to communicate to the hiring manager how you communicate. And of nothing works better than video, especially with your face and your hands in the video itself. So incorporate video if you can. Okay, written word and verbal communication skills, that, that's what's gonna show the hiring manager that you are a well-rounded professional. Lastly, tip number five is technical virtuosity. Now I've left this to the end deliberately because most people tend to focus on the technology. There's an argument for that, and I'm not gonna deny it. However, I would offer this up for your consideration. There are many, many people in the world who can do the tech. They can do the tech just as well as you can. Some, maybe even a lot of people can do it even better than you can. So technical virtuosity, the ability to actually do the tech, whether that's the stats or the machine learning or the Python code or whatever you're doing, is certainly required. It is a necessary but not sufficient condition anymore to differentiate yourself. So yes, you need to have technical virtuosity, but it's all the other stuff that I just talked about that's really gonna give the power to differentiate yourself. But to be complete, let's talk about technical virtuosity, okay? So I'll, let me show you what I mean by that. And I'm gonna use an example from my project, not surprisingly, Project Trommel. It was written in Java, because this was nine years ago. It's a Hadoop thing, and if you're not familiar, it doesn't really matter. It's written in Java. But the code itself is not what is important. What is important is what I did with the code. Because what I'm gonna show you here is the kinds of things that you should be doing in your code to demonstrate technical virtuosity, whether it's Java, or it's R Markdown, or Python, or whatever it is. You need to write clean code. You need to demonstrate technical virtuosity. Um, if it's no, if it's even if it's just relatively simple R code, but you're doing statistical analyses, please take care to write comments, to write the code appropriately. Use good naming conventions, use good coding conventions. And you can see here, that's exactly what I did. I've got a nice little blurb here about the licensing, and then I've got extensive comments. Java supports this thing called Java Doc, 
which allows you to write in your comments documentation. And then what you do is you point a particular utility at your code, and it will generate for you a whole bunch of HTML pages that are documentation for your code. So I took advantage of all that. I did all of that. And I wrote good code, and I used lots of white space. And if you don't like my coding, my coding style, that's okay. We can talk about that in another day. But notice that I have all of these things, right? Nice code, lots of white space. And some people might think this is too much white space, but that's okay. That's the way I like to write my code. I've never really seen too many people complain about it. Who knows, right? I've got exceptions going on here. All the kinds of things that you would expect for good quality Java code. Not only that, but my code is structured well in terms of the packaging, in terms of the design patterns that are being used. And once again, if none of that makes any sense to you, that's okay, because what you need to do is just map this idea of doing the technology, the doing the tech in an excellent manner to what, you, what you're doing. So for example, if you're doing statistical analysis in R, great, make sure that your statistical uh, analyses are solid. You're meeting all the assumptions and you're documenting in your code with comments. Or if you're using R Markdown, make sure, for example, that your final resulting R Markdown is very well written and also um, is well documented. So that is the technical virtuosity aspect. It's, it's tip number five. And like I, like I said, it's table stakes. The technology just gets your foot in the door these days. It doesn't really differentiate you all that much unless you're in a really, really specialized space. But if you're going for a general analytics position, technical virtuosity alone is not gonna be enough. You need all of the other things. There you have it, my top five tips for creating data analytics portfolio projects that are most likely to impress a hiring manager. And once again, I can't stress this enough, right? You want to create a portfolio project that demonstrates your capabilities as a well-rounded professional, and then show your work. Don't be shy, splatter it all over social media if you can. It'd be, it's a great way to start networking and get your work and your capabilities and the things that you're doing out there in the world. Until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.